Hello, fabulous entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 226, which means that all of the show notes and relevant links can be found over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 226. In today's episode, I'm going to be answering the question, are you overcomplicating your marketing? And I have a really simple startup marketing plan that will help you grow your business really quickly. So let's dive on in. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. I'll be honest with you, when I ask women who are starting their business what they're doing in order to get their business growing and growing their audiences, I feel tired just listening to all the different things that they're doing. They are on Instagram, they are on Facebook, they are on Pinterest, they have a website, they are doing SEO, they're going to networking events, they are going to conferences, they're in structured referral networks, they wanna do affiliates, they are running webinars, they've got challenges, they're gonna write a book. They've got so many things going on in order to try and grow their business. And even just hearing me say that, if that is resonating with you, I just want to say it doesn't have to be that hard. And particularly when you're first starting out in business, you don't want to be spreading yourself thin amongst dozens of different strategies to market yourself. You want to be focusing on the things that work and making the things that you've decided to focus on work as effectively as possible before you add anything else to the equation. And for so many people, I think the reason why we overcomplicate it is because there's so much advice out there in the online business world about what you must be doing in order to be successful online. I just saw a post in a Facebook group I'm in and the opening line was, If you are not on LinkedIn every day, you are losing money. And I was just like, this is the same fear-based stuff that gets women so tied up in knots about what they should and shouldn't be doing in order to grow their business. And it leaves you confused. Now, first and foremost, people are telling you that you have to do a specific strategy because they are going to sell you a course on how to do that strategy. They're going to sell you coaching on how to do that strategy. So first and foremost, look at it for what it is. Yes, everyone's got their opinions and their ideas about what it takes to grow a business and what the best strategy is. But at the end of the day, if they're trying to convince you that their one thing is the one way to do it, either one, they have a vested interest in you believing that because they're going to sell something to you and or two, that's the only way that they know how to do it. So they'd prefer that you believe that that's the best way because that's the way that they specialize in. So I want to share with you my simple three-part marketing plan and you can use this three-part marketing plan regardless of what platform you decide to focus on, regardless of whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, where you whether you want to work with people one-to-one or one-to-many, whether you want to sell high ticket or low ticket or however you want to grow your business, this simple three-part marketing plan is a really beautiful way for you to keep your marketing strategy contained, focus on what works and making the things you choose to focus on work and make them more effective and get you to the point where you're making consistent, reliable, predictable, sustainable income from your marketing efforts in your business. Sound good? I think it's really sexy. I think it's really simple. And the beautiful thing is, is that this three-part marketing plan can be tailored to your specific strengths, your specific niche, your specific market, and it can work for everyone. Everyone. It can absolutely work for everyone. So this three-part marketing plan is, number one, reach the right people. Number two, convert the right people into paying clients. Number three, nurture your mindset. That is my three-part startup marketing plan. And until you are making five to $10,000 a month in your business, you don't need to do anything more complex than that. Because with that, that level of complexity, that simplicity of marketing plan, you should be able to be having five to 10 
really high quality lead conversations with people about whether the, working with you is the right fit and converting a good chunk of those people. And so it's very reasonable to expect that you're making a good five to $10,000 a month out of that very simple marketing plan. Now, I have used this simple marketing plan to hit $25,000 a month in my business. I have helped women in startup use this simple marketing plan to hit $15,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $30,000 a month, and I even had a client who had a $45,000 a month with a very simple marketing plan based on this. Absolutely based on this. Reach, conversion, mindset. Now, the key to keeping this simple is pick one strategy per step. So for your reach, have one focus point. So how are you going to get in front of the right people for your product or service? So you can choose, I'm going to focus on an SEO based strategy with my website using Instagram, uh, using Pinterest for SEO. Great. That's a great way to achieve reach. Or you could decide I'm going to use Facebook ads. Or you could decide, I'm going to post in Facebook communities. Or you could decide, I'm going to use Instagram, um, in, including Instagram posts and Instagram stories, right? Hashtags and stories, right? It might be your, that might be your reach strategy. So you, oh, you could use LinkedIn, right? For that person who said, if you're not using LinkedIn, you're leaving money on the table. You're, you're wasting money. You're losing money. She said losing money. Anyway, so you have your one key way of achieving that outcome in your marketing strategy. So what is your strategy to reach the right people? Do you have one that is better than all the others? And are you dedicating the majority of your time on reach to the one that works? Or have you been getting some traction in Facebook groups, some traction on Instagram, some traction on LinkedIn, some traction from networking events, some traction from doing guest posts and podcasts, some traction from Pinterest and, visitors to your website and you're doing none of them particularly well, you're doing all of them pretty poorly. Because that's the situation that I see so many people trapped in. They think they need to do all the things and in the end, they end up doing none of them particularly effectively. Or they've got one strategy that's actually working really well for them, but they don't put any time or energy into that strategy because they're so busy chasing shiny objects that are going to get them more reach and more high quality clients and high, much better conversions. They've been convinced that they're missing out and their FOMO, fear of missing out, has driven them away from the strategy that was actually working for them in the first place. So part A, reach. Now, of course, some of those strategies are scalable and some of them are not. For example, posting in other people's Facebook groups is not particularly scalable. If you want to go and reach more people, you're going to need to be in more groups. You're going to have to put more time in. But when you are initially growing your business and marketing your business in Facebook communities, when you have done that consistently, you are testing your messaging, making sure you've got your niche sorted, practicing your sales conversations, your conversions, working out what the best product is or service is for your ideal client. All of those things can then be applied to a more scalable marketing strategy. It does not need to be completely scalable out of the gate. You don't need 4,000 leads to make a sale. You need one quality lead to make a sale. That is all it takes. So instead of looking for strategies that get you thousands of reach and really low quality uh, leads, low quality reach, low connection reach, and it's not actually working for you, Focus on strategies that get you high connection and therefore that makes your conversion strategy part two of this so much simpler and easier. So again, the secret is choose one conversion strategy. So you might choose that Instagram is your reach strategy and your conversion strategy is to get people engaging with direct messages with you and having lots and lots of direct message conversations with people. I was just working with a VIP client a couple of weeks ago and she's like, oh, well, I don't really have a promo strategy for my VIP work. It's just that when I do Instagram stories or Facebook stories or Facebook lives, I have three or four people private message me and ask me how they can work with me. I was like, that's a strategy. That's actually a really beautiful strategy and it's high connection, high conversion, and it's getting you lots and lots of client inquiries and they are turning into paying clients 
it's a strategy. It's just that you didn't realize it was a strategy and it's working really well. So, you know, when I was talking to this particular client, she was thinking she needed to set up an automated funnel and automated webinars in order to get VIP clients in. And she was really worried that she wasn't doing the right things to get VIP clients in the door. And I said, well, where are your VIP clients coming from at the moment? She's like, they just private message me because I do really cool Instagram lives and Facebook lives. And I was like, well, keep doing that. Let's not break it if it's let's not break it if it's not broken. Let's not fix it if it's not broken. So your strategy uh, for conversion could be as simple as a direct message strategy. It could be a little bit more complicated. You could run a live webinar each month. I really love a live webinar because there's so many add-on benefits for the long-term growth of your business with that as your conversion strategy. My initial conversion strategy when I first started my business was offering low-cost introductory sessions, two-hour intensives with me, and getting out there. My reach strategy was getting it out onto social media, into Facebook communities, and the conversion was getting them into the introductory sessions. And about 60% of the people who did an introductory session with me ended up working with me as a VIP in a longer-term one-to-one working relationship. That was my strategy. And to be honest with you, I went to a bunch of webinars Uh, in about my sixth and seventh month of business because I'd hit a 20K month in month six at a a 10 to 12K month in month seven. And I was worried, oh, my strategy is not scalable. And I was seeing all of these fear-based things about you're missing out on money. You're not doing it right. You're blah, 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 blah. And so I was going to these webinars and they were basically telling me that what I was doing wasn't scalable. It's not going to work. So you don't do that anymore. You have to sell courses. It has to be passive. It has to be leveraged. And I totally second guessed my business and ended up sucking the income out of it because I was like, oh, I can't work with people one to one. That's trading dollars for hours. So that's not scalable. I must be doing something wrong. Meanwhile, I'd be making 20K a month and totally uh, making, you know, growing a business really organically with fun and easy things. And here I was being led to believe I was doing it the wrong way. So reach, convert, mindset. That is the three part strategy. Now, when it comes to mindset, I always say the most powerful mindset practice is one in which you can notice um, and uncover and then also clear any of the limiting beliefs and mindset blocks that come up for you as you go. That might mean you work with a practitioner as your mindset thing. It might mean that you have a regular tapping practice, EFT. It might mean that you journal every single day and listen to Um, positive affirmations. I don't mind what your mindset activities are, what your mindset strategy is, but I really do think if you can find your one key thing in each of those three stages and just focus on making those work, you simplify your marketing strategy, you make your business so much more enjoyable, you get to choose the one thing that you love and enjoy doing the most, and you get to easily create business growth and momentum and you get to easily learn how to get the right messaging the right sales the right uh, ask the right questions and understand your ideal client really deeply in a way that helps you facilitate a big transformation for them and really create that connection and, and engagement so that your audience continues to snowball and grow how amazing is that So find the one thing. And the thing with this is, is that when you simplify your marketing strategy right down the way that I'm suggesting here, what ends up happening is if it doesn't work, you can identify what's not working and why it's not working. So let's say your reach strategy is Instagram and you're posting on Instagram consistently, you're using the hashtags, you're learning all of the tips and tricks on how to you know, reach new people on Instagram and get in front of all the right audiences, and you're not reaching anyone on Instagram. You're not getting any engagement. It's not working. By having committed to that as your reach strategy, if it's not working, you know that it's not actually the strategy that's the problem. It's actually your messaging and your niching because anyone can grow an audience on Instagram. Every market has an Instagram based audience that you can grow. So if you're learning the Instagram tips and tricks and tools and strategies and you're implementing them and you're doing the right things, but it's not getting you the results, 
the issue is not Instagram. The insta the issue is not your Instagram strategy. It's your niche and messaging. So it also helps you to be much more precise about what needs to be fixed if things aren't making uh, making progress and, and achieving results for you in your business. And similarly, if your conversion strategy is to use webinars as a conversion strategy and you put together a webinar and you don't get enough signups or you get lots of signups but no one converts into the sale, the, ch- the issue is not the webinar. The issue is not the the strategy, it's not the vessel that you use to get the result. It's the niche and the messaging within that vessel that clearly isn't working. So by simplifying your strategy down, not only do you make it easier for yourself to implement that marketing strategy in your business, but you also make it easier to work out what's not working and what needs to be improved. And it also makes it much easier for you to see when you change something, what the impact of that change is. Because you don't have... 15 different things all going on at once and you change something here and you change something here and you change something there and then all of a sudden you've got a little bit of extra momentum and you don't know why and then so you just have to keep doing all 15 things again. So you're creating this simplicity for yourself which makes it so much easier. So if that sounds really appealing to you and you would love to start growing your business with a very simple startup strategy... I have a great free resource for you as well. It's called Fast Track Your Startup. It's an hour and a bit of um, video training in which I take you through how you can get from where you are to consistent income in your business the fast way. How to speed up the process of getting yourself from I want to have a business to my business is making consistent income and I know exactly how I'm doing it and how to grow it from here. So if that sounds good to you, I want you to come over to the show notes at tashcorbin.com forward slash 226. I'll pop a link there at the bottom of the show notes for you to come over and check out my Fast Track Your Startup training and we will get your business off the ground and stop making things difficult. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for this episode. As always, come on over to the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Use hashtag podcast aha. Let me know you've been listening to episode number 226. Ask your questions, share your light bulb moments. Tell me what you're going to simplify in your business. And until next time, thanks so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. And I cannot wait to see you shine. Bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools, and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.